Hi, Dave Youngquist, Last Cavalry TV. Welcome to part three of Painting a Figure with Acrylics. This episode, we're going to show you some techniques on how to achieve realistic finishes on the equipment using the real stuff as reference. Let's start. So here we have the canteen. I'm going to base coat the wool area, the burnt umber. Um, not super thin on this step. I'm just going to get it all Again, I'm using the uh, device so we keep uh, keep the camera steady. And we'll let this dry for a second. So our base coat of burnt umber is dried sufficiently. I'm adding Vallejo flat earth in a stipple pattern to replicate the wool that you see on this original example. And you can see you don't have to be super careful, but you do want to be random. Then we're going to add a little bit of Iraqi sand into the flat earth color and lightly tap that in. And I'm using very little water. And I want the paint to run during this step. Might, you know, save this for an old brush because you see it's a little bit, can be a little bit damaging. And I'll go back in with just a little bit more of that burnt umber right here. A little more of the flat earth. I'm just kind of playing around, just getting it. We'll let that dry for a second. So the color of the cup, I'm going to use Andrea Color, number six, field gray. By Vallejo again the, uh, the flat earth and just a touch of the, uh, the burnt umber which I don't have to show you since I tend to show you that in every video. So we're going to get a nice base coat on this. Yeah, it'll be a little bit darker than I wanted so I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. A bit more of the uh, flat earth. Absolutely a gorgeous day here in Michigan. Pretty darn hot, but it makes it more fun than sitting in the basement painting. So now we're going to add a little bit of damage. And as you see in the original example, that this cup is not aluminum. Look at the rust. Quite often I see uh, a lot of canteens painted by modelers and it's always silver silver chipping. Well, it's just not the case on this particular one. So you do have some uh, you do have some leeway there depending on you know, what you're trying to do. I'm using camo black brown and then straight field gray directly under the chip make it pop a little bit more. And you can see I'm painting at a funny angle. But yeah, where it normally would chip is of course just you know right at right at the edges. Again to get that highlight to make it pop or you know show a bit of depth it's feel great added just a little bit of the rack sand just to lift it up. Just a bit more on those edges. Using Vallejo red leather, 
which is a nice rusty color. We're going to add just a little bit of that into the center. Yeah, it's a little bit bright, so we're going to take our brush. You know, maybe I think I'm going to add a little bit of mahogany brown just to tone that down a bit. Again, mahogany brown's a nice red brown, but is very effective for creating rust effects. Let's see, that's going to just drop that just a smidgen. And we're going to take a thin wash of that, of again the mahogany brown, thin it out, and float a rust line. Let's see, get rid of that. And then we'll go back in where there's a little too much for my liking, and we'll just kind of dot it out. See? It's like anything, a little bit of back and forth. So, I'm going to paint the strap using camel black brown. I recommend that you never ever use black when painting or trying to achieve the effect of black leather. It's just too dark and you can't shade it. So we'll get this in. And now that that's painted, now we take our flat black from Andrea. We paint the buckle, outline the strap, shadow here, under there, 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 and now <clears throat> we take our mahogany brown Just hit the edges, showing just a little bit of wear. See how I'm using the side of the brush? I'm only going to paint the one side because it's the only side I can see at this angle. You can see just lightly, lightly tapping that in. Then I'm going to take our old friend Vallejo Smoke. Thin it down, and this will give it the nice satin sheen. There we go. And our last step, good old mechanical pencil. We want to add just a little bit of shine where the metal is Fresh. We're going to go over the buckle once again, and just a little bit there, a little bit on the edge here. There's your canteen. So, to do the MG42, I'm going to be using the new metal polishing powder from Ushi. I'm using the iron, I tested them all. And for this particular application, you can see it's super, super fine. I mean, this is the finest polishing powder I've ever found. You can actually even mix it with a medium and airbrush it. So I've got a Q-tip. This is painted flat black. And I'm just going to add a bit of this. Use my finger. And so you can see I'm using my finger to, to buff it out and applying this powder with the Q-tip. Make sure you always seal that jar because if you tip this over, oh, you're going to be in serious trouble. It will literally, it will literally go, go everywhere. But you can see what a nice, nice finish that we're getting on this. I mean, and you just keep buffing it out. Again, you could do this with cloth, your 
fingers. Q-tip, and we're also going to do the stand for the machine gun. Exact same way. And if need be, you can go back in with your mechanical pencil and punch certain areas up and buff those out. So this is a really great product. I highly recommend it for any type of uh, metal effects, uh, regardless of what you're working on. Now, the butt guard and the trigger guard um, were quite often made in a hard plastic, a Bakelite, and they were done in wood. Uh, for this example, I think we're going to do them in a Bakelite, since we've showed you how to do uh, lots of different wood effects in the past. So let me get some paint out and we'll show you how to do that. I'm going to take the Andrea flat black. In this case, we do want to use the flat black. Go back over. Obviously, you do this step after you've buffed everything out. Here, the butt stack. Again, this plastic had just a slight sheen, so once this dries, we'll put a satin varnish over it. There, I mean, this. This is the simplest way of achieving a really wonderful and very realistic metal effect. Here's the shovel and the 98K bayonet. We're going to use the Andrea flat black and just base coat the metal parts. And this final item that we're going to paint is going to show you the combination of every single technique that we've covered today. So again, just black all this in with the flat black. Or you could even prime with flat black. So, using the same technique, we're going to take a little bit of this, this cotton bud and just get a little bit of Looks like we need a little bit more of that. And we're going to get a little bit of metal effect in there and then we'll tone that down on the scabbard also. Polish that out a little bit. Actually, I think I'll use an old brush for that. It's a tight area. This, again, this brush is shot. You can see I've got blue tape on it. Letting me know, yeah, this brush has got metallic particles on it. Then, because these definitely rusted up a bit, I'm going to add a little bit of our rust color. Except this time I'm going to use, from the Andrea Flesh Paint Set, color number five. I'm still going to use that metallic brush because we are going into areas that had Powder there. I'm just going to dab that in a little bit in here, a little bit over there. Dry the brush off. See, just dab that in there just a little bit. And we'll use a little bit of the mahogany brown just to add one other rust color. added just a touch of water. You can see just a little bit. Okay, now we're going to go back to our 
camo black brown for our black leather effect, just like we did on the canteen. New brush, and we'll black the leather in. Using our mechanical pencil, we're going to outline that. We're going to put a little highlight here, button, and also the top. Of the bayonet. Okay, back to our mahogany brown using the exact same technique that we've used before. But we're just going to put an outline where the leather would wear slightly. Again, I don't thin the paint out for this step. I'm using mahogany brown again by Vallejo. And this also, by putting this highlight here, oops, a little too much, you also separate these really dark, dark tones. A little bit of water. And we'll go, have to go back and do a little cleanup work as always, trying not to block the view here. So just go around and basically edge, but in a random motion. Take a little bit more of our darker tone. I'll use a little bit of Andrea Black. Add that in there. Whoops. so you can see, and we'll outline these areas. Final step, Vallejo smoke. So, I had a couple requests how thin you actually make this paint. Well, show you really thin okay so you can see that take a paper towel dab just a bit off and then we're going to cover all the leather parts again to add a sheen Stir around. see how this paint breaks so it gives it this really nice natural look. I use it anytime I'm trying to create a leather effect. And also, you notice that I painted the handle in Iraqi sand. And this is my preferred way of creating wood effects. Notice that the brush goes only in one direction. That's what creates the wood grain. It takes a moment to dry. And with repeated applications, you get that real nice gritty wood tone effect. Well, this has been part three. Hope there's been some good tips here for you. And stay tuned for part four, painting the uniform.